Look, I've been playing MMORPGs for over 20 years, and I've made literally every mistake when it comes to playing these games. I've decided to make this video to save you a lot of time, energy, and anger, not to make the same mistakes I've made. Stop doing these 10 things. It's killing your fun. And let's start with number 10. MMO population. For some reason, we as gamers have been obsessed with, quote unquote, is this game dead? Nearly every game, including some at the top, are now considered dead games. It's almost like the plague. You don't want to go near anything labeled as such. I myself am guilty of this, checking Steam charts and Twitch tracker to see if these meta games are shifting green or red. But does that really matter? Well, yes and no. The yes is, you want the game to have longevity and stay active with new and fresh content. Remember how I said I started MMOs 20 years years ago? Well, that dead game, Ultima Online, is still going over 20 years later thanks to private servers which are player run. So yes, the game's population matters, but even a game with a very small player base can remain active indefinitely. Which leads to, what then really does matter? Well, it should be obvious, it's friends. MMOs have become increasingly solo friendly, almost adverse to grouping and not requiring you to get out of your comfort zone and make friends. The number one factor I look for in picking an MMO is, do I have friends to play with? Most of my friends migrate in and out between three to five games, and when they leave my current game, it feels like a barren wasteland. It doesn't matter how much gold I have, my achievements, leaderboard scores, or anything. It matters if I have friends to hang out with, play, and enjoy games together. A tip for you when checking into a potential MMO is how many activities are matchmaking available. Ultimately, if there's limited matchmaking, you're going to run into a problem when your friends migrate to another game and you're left with no one to clear content. Check YouTube videos, websites, and watch some streams to see if there's a lot you can do solo or via matchmaking in order to meet and maintain friends. And for the love of the maker, quit checking out the dang population. No kid wakes up and says, I want to play soccer because it's the most popular sport ever. No, they're drawn to it because it looks fun. And there's people to play with. Do the same thing in MMOs and you'll be much happier. Speaking of being happier, most MMOs have a repetitive, boring grind. But what if there was a game that made grinding fun? Well, there is. Thanks to our sponsor of this video, Bloodlines Hero of Lythus, a free-to-play mobile game available on Android or iOS. Use my link in the description below or scan this QR code to start playing for free right now and earn a special starter pack. This game is an RPG set in a fantasy environment with top-down isometric view you may be familiar with. What separates this game from others is the amazing graphics for a mobile game, but also the ability to build your own kingdom and of course collect new champions, characters, and customize them. Bloodline main feature is mixing and matching, well, bloodlines in order to create your own unique champion. Imagine mixing Dragonborn with a vampire, or an elf with an orc. Now is the best time to check this game out with a new clan coming in Christmas. These are the heavy hitters in the game. Think big damage and it'll allow you to create and improve lineage and bloodline or mix and match previous ones. This game also features guild wars, Duke it out in massive territory battles with your friends and claim huge rewards along with crafting your own unique champions. If you're a fan of MMORPGs, you'll enjoy this game. Chilling on your phone, creating builds, mixing bloodlines, and enjoying the graphics and combat. The best part is, well, it's free. Download now using my code in the link in the description below or scanning this QR code shown on this video and receive a free starter pack with stamina potions, gold, and diamonds. And also get a new Lycan champion for free playing in Christmas starting December 22nd. Now back to our video and number nine, the MMO grind. Every MMO is designed to keep you playing constantly. They want you to have a never ending treadmill of things to do, items to collect and achievements to earn. MMOs are not single player games. They cannot be beaten per se. And even when you do, you start a new character, guild, server, and do it all over again. What's gonna kill your fun in MMOs is not understanding the grind. Grinding simply means doing repetitive tasks daily and weekly in order to progress your character, story, or achievement. You need to understand and embrace this about MMOs. Every one of them has a grind. You need to pick one that you enjoy doing. What some consider boring mundane tasks, others enjoy and vice versa. Some players love harvesting, running around picking up plants, cutting down trees and farming. Others love the action, killing, running around in circles for hours, killing the same set of 20 zombies. Others love trading, housing, economy, and so on. And in each of these play loops, you'll find countless hours of activities, tasks, and friends. You need to find an MMO that gives you what you want. Whether you're a flower picker, a sweaty PvP, -er, or a casual quester, do you enjoy the grind, the activities? Do you want to log in in order to sit and do the simple mundane task in your chosen MMO fantasy world? 
great, then you can stick it out over the long haul. But if your MMO playtime is 90% doing things you don't enjoy, so you can spend 10% on activities that you do enjoy, it's time to move on and find a better hobby. You're killing your fun. Next up is number eight. We'll be discussing meta classes and how this can destroy your enjoyment for games. Every game will have meta or tier list of classes that are the best and worst available. No MMO is ever perfectly balanced. They're always in flux. This happens to be the number one question every time I stream an MMO. Which class should I pick? There are mathematical benefits to playing optimal classes, but for the vast majority of people, this will not matter that much. Look, you're going to be putting in possibly 10,000 hours on your main character. Over that time, your class will receive many buffs and nerfs. There will be patches and updates where you're on the bottom of the barrel in performance and some where you're on top. The better question you ask yourself is this. What looks and feels most fun to play? When traveling through towns or dungeons, which class gives off that sense of awe and wonderment when you see the animations flash and the spells being cast. That's the one for you. Moreover, what class fits my personality? For me, personally, it's the one that rambos in with heavy melee super aggressive. If I pick a ranged damage dealer, it never matters how powerful they are. It's always 10 times less fun for me. Pick the class, role, and play style that looks and feels fun. It will ebb and flow in terms of power. Sit back, enjoy the ride. It's a video game. It's entertainment. You should enjoy every second on your main character. And when you decide on the main character, most likely you're gonna look up some guide from a pro. But there's a common mistake, and that's number seven, following a guide to a T. Consider MMO guides very helpful. In fact, that's what I do on my website, deltiasgaming.com. But not the end-all be-all to your character and playstyle. Most people will pick up a guide and build, but not ask themselves, who's the creator of this build? For instance, my builds typically are lean towards beginner, solo player with emphasis on survivability. I want the person picking it up to feel very powerful and be able to take on anything solo. Others might lean towards the exact opposite, high damage and assume the player has a great sense of survivability already. Another thing is this, you need to experiment and understand your class and build independently. Just because someone has a path for success doesn't mean that it'll be your path. And some of the top players will have very wildly different, completely customized builds to just their playstyle. This is true for any game. What's considered meta by the vast 99% of the player base is not what the 1% use. So if you pick up a 1%er's build, know this, it's most likely not gonna work for you, and that's okay. Use it as a template. Find the information that took them thousands of hours to play and discover and save yourself time and pain figuring it out yourself. Then make it your own with deviations that fit your playstyle. Each person has varying degrees of skills, reflexes, and genetics that may or may not allow them to be the best on earth. But remember, it's a game. It should be fun. And part of the fun is self-discovery. So don't be afraid to tinker and deviate from the path. Moving on to another thing that's killing your fun, and that's number six, obsessing over best in slot gear. I used to be one of those players so concerned about my gear that I wouldn't step foot into content that I was fully mid max. Ironically, in order to get fully mid maxed, I'd have to do the content that I was afraid to step foot in. I see a lot of this with people. They have this preconceived notion that, oh, I have to be fully optimized build, best in slot gear possible, and then I'll tackle something hard. From personal experience, I had this attitude because I was afraid of failure. I put up these boundaries around what I thought was possible and always blame my gear. Not my skill or lack of knowledge from my failure. And then one day I did get best in slot gear and I still struggled. I realized my issue wasn't my gear, it was me. Or to the point, stop gating yourself from content because of your gear. If you're playing a game that has a gear score, sure, you'll need some certain level in order to try new content. I wouldn't recommend entering the new content with the minimum gear score, and I wouldn't recommend waiting until the maximum, somewhere in the middle. Every person, no matter if they're a sweat, casual, or whatever label you give them, will struggle when encountering something new. It's called the learning tax. Some people are faster learners. Most players will always struggle when encountering challenging new things. It's part of the fun of MMOs, conquering that boss dungeon raid or trial that took you so many attempts. Regret, perseverance, and sometimes stupid luck, you get it done. And then you get better loot or confidence and it builds on itself. Don't be early Deltia waiting until everything is perfect to start something hard. It'll never be perfect. And through hard challenges and completions, you'll get a sense of accomplishment that's empowering. Moving on to another hot topic that's ruining your enjoyment of video games, MMO specifically, is number five, worrying about having the highest DPS. Let's be totally honest here. Most players are DPS and most of them think they are good at it. And it's not the case. Very few people in MMOs actually do a lot of damage. Meanwhile, 90% of the players think they're great at it. 
The reality is you're probably average like the rest of us. So stop freaking out about it. We are inundated with videos and posts about these super godlike players who do 10 times the damage of the average player. But there's ways to be considered a good DPS without doing the most damage possible. For instance, I have a friend who doesn't do nearly the damage that I do, but he never dies. As in, never dies. So anytime we want to do the newest, hardest thing, I always bring him along. Sure, there are other burners out there with much higher DPS, but I know we'll get the task done. Maybe a little bit slower, but with high survivability and situational rareness, rather than godlike reflexes and rotation, it can be done. If you've seen the videos of people pulling wildly high numbers, don't feel that's what the content is designed for. Don't let that ruin your confidence or self-esteem. Some people in life are just better than you at certain things. Once you hit a certain threshold of damage through practice and experience, start doing the content you want and don't let it hold you back. Moving on to another topic, and that's number four, fear of missing out in daily logins. MMOs are notorious for forcing you to log in daily, weekly, or pretty much all the time. Whether it's FOMO with retired item sets or legacy items or daily logins where you feel like you have to log in every day and clock in like it's your job. Stop. Don't let them control your behavior and here's why. If you've noticed a trend in MMOs, they need to one up their previous expansion and DLCs and this usually includes access to higher level or more impactful gear. Sure, you might miss out on a weapon previously or something useful here and there, but most likely the next item set will be much better than the previous. Why? So that way you buy the DLC and expansion. Look, if you're excited to rush home from work and play and you spent your entire working day daydreaming about the game, log in and play it. If you slog home to make sure you log in and collect some useful reward, that's a job, not entertainment. I remember staring at my computer screen asking myself, why am I playing this game? I'm having zero fun, but it's compulsive. I log in the morning, I do mundane tasks I don't enjoy. I get on in the evening, and you guessed it, do mundane tasks I don't enjoy. That's the moment I hit the uninstall and find something better to do with my time in my life. Next up, something that it's a trap for a lot of players, and that's number three, buying all the content as soon as you start the game, and it can destroy your wallet and ruin your fun. Every MMO or game, like a job or relationship, has a honeymoon period. Everything is great, it's rainbows and sunshine, and nothing is wrong with the game, or your boyfriend or girlfriend. You only see the good aspects and neglect all of the negatives because you're dripping with dopamine. This is usually your first 10 hours in any MMO. There's all sorts of pop-ups for progression, you're getting more powerful quickly, and it's the time of your life. But then you hit the wall. You start noticing everything you don't like about the game and you reach a critical decision point. Are the negatives outweighing the positives? At that point, you typically decide to commit or move on from the game. This is why I always recommend people to play a trial version or the base game of their MMO before committing massive amount of money to it. You need to spend some time in the world trying to find the flaws, otherwise these games are a money pit. You'll log in, buy all the chapters, expansion, DLCs, you'll buy a couple outfits for your characters, maybe a few loot crates, and sooner or later you spent $1,000 on a game you've played for two hours and they got you. 10 hours later, you realize the game isn't for you and you become resentful towards the game and feeling like you've been used and manipulated. How do I know? Because I've done that exact mistake and it completely killed my enjoyment for all video games, not just one. Remember, MMOs last decades. Buying all the DLCs and expansion the first week you play won't give you anything but more anxiety because you feel obligated to get the content completed. Avoid this trap. Test it out for hours and then make a commitment once you realize it's for you. And we have two more topics remaining. These are very hard to rank first and second, but I'm going to go with one of the most common. That's number two, rushing to endgame. I wish I could go back in time to Elder Scrolls Online launch in 2014. At that time, I was in awe and wonderment at the class, the zone, the story, the lore, environment, and builds. Everything was new, fresh, exciting. I wanted to explore it all. I didn't really care if I was powerful, what people were doing at max level. It just didn't matter to me. Every day, logging in, just exploring the map without a guide felt like a single-player Elder Scrolls game, and I was completely hooked. If I would have rushed to endgame, just grinded out some zombies and reached max level within a few hours, how would that experience turned out for me? Like any content locust, sucking down and devouring content, I would have rushed to endgame, said this game is garbage and has nothing to do, and left simply to repeat the cycle with the new game all over again. Content Locust, you know who you are. If you've gotten any message here, it's this. MMOs last a very long time. 
They're meant to be played like you eat a bag of potato chips, one chip at a time, slowly consuming and setting it down until you feel full. Part of the fun of any MMO is exploration, tinkering, and finding what the game has to offer. Rushing to end game will kill 99% of your fun. After your first or second playthrough, sure, power level a character, but if it's your first time with the game, take a deep breath and enjoy it for what it is. You'll reach max level soon enough. Reaching our final position, something I think a lot of folks struggle with, especially me, and that's number one, worrying themselves about being the best player. If you have to ask why be the best player, the answer is probably no, and it doesn't even matter. Let me share with you a story to illustrate how this looks. About five years ago, a group of us Elder Scrolls Online players were asked to visit and test a new class at ZeniMax Online Studios in Baltimore, Maryland. A guy you might have heard of named Cypher PK was there, someone who was my friend and rival in the ESO sphere at that time. We all sat down to play the Warden, no knowledge of how it worked, what skills, passives, etc. Let's see who can be the best. Well, within about 30 seconds, Cypher was beating everyone on the new class, just randomly chucking on skills and making it work. He had a level of skill I had not seen before in person. His talent was so much greater than mine. I realized no matter how hard I work, I wouldn't be better at him in this game, or really probably any other game. His ceiling was so much higher than me. But does that really matter? No. The goal of most gamers are to have fun, or at least it should be. Sure, improving and doing challenging things is important, but freaking out and losing over sleep if you're the best player isn't healthy. There will always be someone more gifted, more talented, and sometimes harder working than you, and they're just going to be better. It'll kill your fun if you start stressing out about that, and that's a really good metaphor for life. The better question I started asking myself is, is anyone having more fun than me? Do I beam with enjoyment when I'm playing? And is it palpable that people watching feel that enthusiasm coming off the stream? Nothing wrong with being the best player or striving for improvement. But if I gave you two choices, having the most fun or being the best, what would you choose? Well, gang, that wraps up the video. Hope you got something out of this. I've made all these mistakes countless times, and I want to save you new season or returning MMO players some discomfort. Pick up your game. Have fun. Be nice to each other. It's important. We want to make these games hospitable zones, not barren wastelands. Hit that like if you got something out of this video, and come watch me live on twitch.tv slash Gaming, where my mom claims I'm the best streamer ever. Thanks for watching.